This take is out of this world. The vast majority of women would be disgusted by how men want female characters to look like this. First off, there's a huge difference between female characters and women in real life. To demand women in real life to look like my Shiranui is obviously unrealistic and not the kind of pressure they want to put on all real life women. Real women already pressure themselves to look like models. Men are not the ones overly critical of real life women's appearances. It's always the women themselves. You don't have to look like my Shiranui, ladies. You are your own person and not a fictional character. And that's precisely why we need bigger breasts in the Max Slider than the ones in the new Dragon Age. That's the context for this conversation. Yeah, the average women don't have D cups, but there are plenty of them that do. And even the women that are as flat as an ironing board also want to play as ladies with mountainous breasts. Speaking of women, there's one thing that women do every month. It involves a lot of bleeding. Of all the things to get outraged for, someone is selling reusable pads featuring South Park characters. That's disgusting, but okay then. What's wrong with it? Oh, it's the usual Twitter X freaks not being able to tell fiction and reality. I'm sure everyone thinks it's okay to smear your period on pads. That's their whole purpose. Not you, apparently, because those pads have drawings of kids on them. They're fictional, and they are pads. You are meant to put it down there. It's weird, bro. You're 36. I don't see how that's relevant. Why would you put that near your privates? Because they are pads. That's what they're supposed to be when the time is right. Children shouldn't be a part of a not safe for work joke. I agree. Thank God that South Park characters are not real. It's not like they got probed in the ass or something. I don't want to put my privates on a character's head, let alone one in middle school. They're fictional characters, but fair enough. Just put on plain looking pads instead and you'll be fine. Okay, that was stupid, but at least there's a market for it. And I can see why someone would buy it. As a pad, I mean, not as a way to smear your period blood the South Park characters. This next hoopla, however, I don't get it. Of all the games to use as a PSA, I don't know where this came from, but a teacher made a Persona 5 themed PSA talking about sexually transmitted infections or STIs. Okay, I love Persona, but I can tell you for a fact that the last groups of people that should be talking about sex should be Persona teenagers. That'd be like having Dora the Explorer talking about the dangers of the cartel. Considering how sexless the whole series is, there are definitely a few groups of people with less experience in sex than Persona fans. I find that very funny. But then again, that applies to most anime fans. This PSA will be more useful to furries if you ask me. Okay, fine, the characters don't experience sex as much as real high schoolers, but they can still talk about the dangers of unsafe sex and the risks being associated by it, and if it is to grab attention of some high schoolers and inform them about the dangers of life, why not? Well, at least it garners some attention, and if it informs one student about the dangers of sexually transmitted infections, it does some good. But that is a case of using fiction to attract people towards real-life issues. This next hoopla is taking fiction and connecting that to the real world in the dumbest way possible. One of the most baffling discourses that happened this last couple of weeks was about how the demons of Freerun are not monsters at all. I think these people genuinely think that because they look humanoid and are capable of sentient thoughts, these demons are misunderstood. Nope, they're still about as evil as the demons from Doom, and the Doom guy solution is the only solution. This person made parallels of the demons on Freerun to the ones who controlled the banks. First off, they do have a lot of power and influence on Freerun, so it's not a stretch to think that they might control the flow of money. Second, are you comparing sociopathic humanoid demons to the Jews? No one is making that comparison here, except you. Oh sorry, never mind, not just the Jews, but also the gays, gypsies, and disabled people. Those people you mention exist in the real world and are human beings. The demons in Freerun are actual demons. One is reality, one is fiction. Stop treating them the same. Here's another example of associating fiction with the real world in the dumbest ways. This person is delusional. This person disagrees that fictional characters are objects because fiction has been used to dehumanize marginalized people. I think you're confusing fiction with bigotry. Fiction is created in the context of real life. That still doesn't mean fictional depictions are endorsements or meant to represent real life. People like you don't want to think on a deeper level. That implies that you are, but you're not even on the surface. Characters do not exist in a vacuum. Yes, they do. Stop associating them to real people like this. We are all plagued by patriarchal thoughts and implicit bias. Don't project your bigotry to everyone else, bigot. You can't objectify a character without objectifying what they represent. Yes, you can. People kill all the time in fiction. That doesn't mean they are murderers in real life. I agree with my follower. The original post is in bad faith. You just said everyone has implicit bias. Assuming that everyone has some form of bigotry is not what I would call good faith. 
Let's keep fictional things in fiction and talk about the quality of them instead of how moral or immoral they are. Like this person who really doesn't like how a series ends. Jujutsu Kaisen just ended and it leaves a lot to be desired for some fans, especially for those who love Gojo. I won't say what happened to him because... I literally don't know, I haven't read that far. But what I can say is, this fan is so disappointed that they want Gojo to be sold to a different company that cherishes his value and respects his personality. Bro, Japan's legal system is horrible for copyright. How about you do this? Look up what an exported character is, or XP. Basically, do what Fifty Shades of Grey did and rename the obvious Twilight characters. Alternatively, you can reuse character designs. Shujin from Bakuman is obviously like Yagami. In fact, a lot of the characters in Bakuman are just Death Note redesigns, because the mangaka is the same, and I still remember a certain real-life person from that one shot. Point is, whatever fate that happens to Gojo in JJK, you can just make your own character with a similar personality and looks without having too much legal troubles. Hopefully. Unfortunately, we have to go back to fictional stories being problematic and immoral again, because people really cannot distinguish between fiction and reality. I have no problem with the rainbow flag, and they have about as much creative freedom as everyone else around the world. I don't care about your orientation, I care about art, creativity, and the freedom that people have to express them. I agree with this person, you should not say one queer fiction is fine, but the other one is not fine, or at least from a moral standpoint. If you're gonna criticize a story, criticize it for their quality, not for their uncomfortable depictions of anything. This person, for example, complained from a moral standpoint. This does not apply to incest and sexual assault topics. Those topics are not okay. They are icky and disgusting. Okay, so is murder, and yet fiction celebrates murder all the time. You can call out queer fiction without antagonizing the queer aspect of it. True, but your callout amounts to, I find these topics disgusting. That's not a sign that the fiction is immoral. That's a sign that this fiction isn't for you, and you should read something else. That was about someone finding out that something is not for them, and that they should read something else. This next supply is about someone finding out that some fiction is okay, but not all of them. This is not a good metric to use, whether a character is legal or not. I have no idea what's going on with this Rexiant guy, but I do know fictional characters, and this person said that if a fictional character looks like an adult, that's perfectly fine. Why are you justifying being horny towards Marin Kitagawa, a 15 year old? Because she looks like an adult? She's still 15! You think that is fine? There are plenty of people online who doesn't think so. The same goes for Jotaro, Josuke, and Giorno. They're all minors in their respective parts, but people are very horny at them. But then you have characters like Yohu from Withering Waves. You are a disgusting human being and a borderline pedophile if you like her, said the guy that thinks screwing a 15 year old is perfectly fine. For the record, I don't mind being horny towards any fictional characters, but I do mind the hypocrisy. It is not like staring at a picture of a 12-year-old in real life. Otherwise, it's like staring at a picture of a 15-year-old in real life, right? Here's another hoopla about fictional characters about something that is so obvious. I don't know what made you think this way. Cute and funny, or cutty, are lolicon code words. Code words? That would imply that people are hiding their desires with those, but they are about as obvious as you can get. Also, fictional characters are not real people. If you call this a dog whistle to predators and you heard it, then you're the dog. What baffles me the most is when these anti-lolicons, who clearly cannot distinguish between fiction and reality, have to attack a whole demographic to justify their hate. It's morally correct to make people of the third world mad. What are you on about? That's straight up bigotry. How dare you live in the third world and like something I don't like. It is mandatory for anyone with a well-built moral compass. To what? Hate on third world people? Because they like something you don't? Then there's this dumbass who thinks that divorce papers and eviction notices are just drawings. Ah yes, another person who cannot distinguish between fiction and non-fiction. It's literally a separate genre in the library, which you clearly don't visit. And that's all for the video today. Thank you all so much for watching. If you made it to the end, here's a kitty for you. And also, huge thanks to all these wonderful sponsors. You are all fantastic. If you want to see your names among these legends, then check out the links down below, just one dollar. And you have supported this channel a lot, seriously. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out my ABB Show stream channel, link down below, go subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.